who wants a fabric haul? Um, I'm guessing you do if you clicked on the video. <laughs> um, I recently went up to New York City, shopped the garment district there, picked up some goodies, and I thought I would show you guys what I got. Okay, so it's been six weeks since I've gone. I know I should have done this video a long time ago, but I moved, things got busy, you know, whatever. So I'm not going to remember every single detail about where I got it and how much I, how much it cost. Um, if there's something you absolutely positively have to have, let me know in the comment section below and I will do my very best to try and track it down. But for the most part, this is just like a show and tell and look at the pretty stuff. And here's what I'm thinking about making with it and any funny stories that come along with shopping in the New York City Garment District because it is, it is an adventure. It is an adventure. Okay. First up is this lovely little print. Now remember, when I go shopping in New York, it's like, a bit of a treasure hunt. I'm looking for a deal. I'm looking for something that I can't just get at Joanne, something that I just don't see all the time in my regular online shopping. I tried to only buy things from stores that don't have an online option, which is another reason why I'm not sure if me telling you where I got it is going to be super helpful unless you live in the city or are headed there. Um, just because it's not... Like if I can buy it online, then I don't, what's the point of me schlepping it all the way back here? I'll just come back home and buy it and have them ship it to me. So I really wanted to find, you know, the little gems. So this one here is a really pretty, um, it's like a, I'm going to guess a rayon chalet, rayon chalet. Um, it's got this really pretty like blue and yellow. I don't know if that's called a mosaic or what, like patchworky kind of thing happening. And then it's also got gold threading throughout. It's like a little bit of a paisley. I don't know. I just thought this was going to make like the most beautiful maxi dress, right? Can't you just see like a super flowy, really long, maybe asymmetrical hem or asymmetric hem? Um flutter sleeve or some kind of, you know, just like really lean into the drapiness of this thing because it is really drapey. It is really lightweight, um, semi-opaque. Like I can see the light through it, but can you guys see me? Um, and you know, can't go wrong with navy blue and yellow and just a really pretty kind of unique print. Um, this one, was it this one? Let me look at the others. Hold on. Yes. This came from a bin, like it's this huge bin on the floor, like one of those big Tupperware bins. And I think it said it was all $5 a yard and you couldn't cut it down and whatever. So anytime I come across a bin like that, whether it's in the garment district or anywhere else, I always go to the bottom of the bin first. That's where the fewest people have dug through. That's where all the goodies live. Everybody else is picked off from the top. We don't need to worry about the top. So I go under, I go under, I go deep. And I start pulling out corners and I pulled this out. It was like a chaotic moment. I'm remembering now because some woman had gotten fabric cut and then let her kid or grandson or somebody hold it, some little child hold it. And the little child ran off with it. They didn't see where the child put it down. And then the child left the store and they couldn't find it. So they were like, well, we already cut it. And she's like, well, I have it paid. And so it was this whole thing about, you know, are we just going to cut her a new one and hope we can find it? I mean, uh, it was, it was, she was yelling. She was, it was really loud and she wasn't mad. She was just like excited, I guess. Do you want to hop up? Jeez Louise. Um, I can't even see her. There she is. Um, so I just dug through the bottom and got out of there because it was just like, it was too much. And I didn't know if it was going to escalate even further. You know how it is. So I was just like. I don't need Karen moments happening in my life. Um, so, um, so yeah, that's the first one. Fun. Okay. Next up is this little guy. This is a crinkle cottony. I think it's a crinkle cotton, but it's almost gauze like, and you can see the print here. Again, I guess I was feeling like really into like the seventies of it all. And so I got all these like, you know, paisley type of interesting little prints. But this one I thought similar to this crinkle cotton that I have would make a really great jumpsuit. 
right? It's just like the print, I don't know, it's just a different print. It's like the colors are nice. Like, you know, after doing my Me Made May try on, I decided I wasn't into like baby pinks and all that anymore. So, you know, the pastels, so what does that really leave behind, you know? So this one has like so many fun colors in it. And it feels really good. It has the texture, but it's still cotton. So it's going to be easy to sew with. Um, has some decent drape, as you can see. So yeah, I thought it'd make a really great like wide leg jumpsuit or maybe like a wide leg pant and then some kind of like matching top set, you know, something like that. Um, there's a lot of yardage here. I want to say this is the one that came from the basement. So there was this store, oh, I can't remember the name of it now, and on the little marquee thing outside the door, it said, come see our basement, you know, everything's $5 a yard or whatever it was. And it's exactly what you think. Like you go down there, or was that the basement one? That might've been the basement one. Shoot, I'll show you that one next just and share the basement story with either one of them. Anyways, it's exactly what you think. You go down there and you're in like the basement of a New York City building and it's kind of creepy and weird. Um, but they had like not that much fabric down there. And so whatever it was, I grabbed it and grabbed three or four yards of it. Um, just to have enough to make sure I could do whatever I wanted to with it. So it was either this one or this one. And now that I'm holding it, I'm thinking it was this one. Um, this one I thought was really cool because as a navy background, I love a navy background. Navy and purple is one of my favorite combos. And it has all these cute little paisley little hearts. So I thought this was really sweet. So this one is a... Hmm, it might be a blend, but it might just be some kind of like polyester or something or another. Um, but lightweight, drapey, you know, just an easy little like maxi skirt or maybe even enough for like a little spaghetti strap dress, something like that. It is really, really soft and smooth. I don't think I realized that in the store. I mean, it is like butter. But uh, the hand feel is very, very, very luxurious, which makes me think it might have some polyester in it um, just because it's so smooth. Um, but they had like three or so colorways in this. Um, and I got the navy and purple one. So I think I'm 99% sure now that this one came from the basement. This one, I don't remember where I got this one from then. If that one came from the basement, I have no idea where I got this one from. Um, this one has a really interesting story. So, um, we were shopping in what is lovingly called Janky Store. I think the real name is like HK Fabric or something, but everyone calls it Janky because it is just that. And the story doesn't help them beat that PR rep that they've got. But it is legitimately like a patchwork, right? Like it's sewn together already in this patchwork surge and then, um, sewn together. So it's legitimately like a patchwork, but all the patchwork has been done for me already. And all these weird prints have been put together in a way already. Okay. So I wanted a patchwork. They had kind of a lot of this in um, different stores has had some kind of version of it. So I wanted to find one that I really, really loved. This one I was kind of hemming and hawing on because I don't know if yellow is like my vibe, but I don't have a lot of yellow stuff. And so I was like a little bit like, I don't know, I could probably do without it. And then the woman was like, so there's like an owner and then there's like the owner's best friend and then they have employees. Maybe it's the owner's brother and then employees. So there's one guy running around acting like he's the boss and he knows what's going on, but he really isn't. And then the employee that we were working with really has no skin in the game. She had no say in negotiating at all. So um, I told, I asked her how much this was. I want to say she said like 12 or $15 a yard. And I was like, oh, I really was only wanting to spend like $10 a yard. And so she called over the brother, you know, Alpha. And he came over and he was like, um, he started pulling it off the bolt. And I was like, I'm not going to spend 12 or 15, whatever it was. I was like, I really only want it for $10 a yard. And so he calculated that there was like four and a half yards on it. And he was like, if you buy it all, I'll give it to you for $10 a yard. And I'm like, well, I really only wanted three yards. So now that I'm having to buy this extra yard and a half, I want it for $8 a yard. And both me and Amber thought that he agreed to that. 
Well, at first he didn't. And then we thought he agreed to that. So then we get to the front and the girl is telling the guy that it's not that. And it was like back and forth, back and forth. And so eventually I just looked at the actual owner guy, the one that was really in charge. And was like, can I have this for $30? And he said, yes. He said, yes, sure, no problem. So I got four and a half yards of this for $30, which came out to about my $8 a yard price. I thought I was killing it doing the negotiations, if I'm being honest, because it was like, uh, no, $10 a yard. No, you're making me buy more yardage. Then I wanted it for even less. And so I, I was really proud of myself. I'm not normally that good at stuff like that, but especially when I don't love something, it's a lot easier to negotiate. So that would be my advice for negotiating in the garment district. Find a fabric you don't have to have, play around with negotiating, see how it feels, see what the response is. And if you don't get it, you don't get the deal you want, you walk away. It's fine. Um, anyway, so this is going to become a really fun jumpsuit, I think. Um, yeah, I don't really want to cut it up too much because it's already like, you know, cut up, but I think it's going to be a really fun, cool, interesting jumpsuit. I just have to be careful that it doesn't end up looking like clown pants. I actually hadn't thought of that until just now. So maybe it's going to be a maxi situation, but I do love sort of the patchwork of it all but I don't know exactly what it's going to be yet, but something long, everything I got, I got enough yardage to make it floor length if I wanted to. So, um, I'll either, um, do make two garments or make one really long one. Something's in here. And it is, oh, capital moving and storage. Piece number 3804, lot number 306. It looks like a really old sticker. <laughs> Oh gosh. Anyways. Okay. So that's the janky store story. And I'm sure there's a million more just like if any of you have ever been to the actual janky store before. Okay. This one I got from Promenade. One of my favorites. I actually think they do have online, but I don't know. I just love the guy there. He's so nice. Um, or did I get this from Metro? Shoot. Now I can't remember. This might have come from Metro, um, but I just thought it was like the most beautiful colorway, right? It's a rayon chalet and it has this sort of like modern floral situation going on. Um, but it's kind of like also like ECAD and kind of like, you know, not so literal, which I really like. I just love the colorway so, so, so much. Um, these like muted mauves and stuff. And because the background is beige, I thought I could get away with that, especially because it also has like the dark browns. I thought for my skin type, it was going to be my skin tone. It was going to be fine. Um, but yeah, just the most luxurious baby soft Metro has really come a long way in terms of their quality. That also means though, that the prices are kind of more expensive and you know, every day it seems on their Instagram, they're having some kind of sale and we went in there and we were like, okay, you know, we're here for the sale. And he, it just seemed honestly like he made it up on the fly, which is fine. You know, he's allowed to do whatever he wants to get people in the door, you know? Um, but it was like one little section and he was like $6. And I was like, but I thought it was like a 30% off thing. And he was like, no, no, this, this whole thing is $6. <laughs> so we were just kind of like, okay, Kashi, like whatever. Um, He's just the sweetest, sweetest guy. We had like such a nice conversation with him. We were the only ones in there because we typically go during the week. Um, you know, we're usually the only ones in the smaller stores at a time, um, which is nice because they get kind of packed with fabric already. And then you add people and it's like, oh, um, but we were able to just kind of like sit and talk with him, talked about his daughters, talked about, you know, like. Hit, like what his plan is for the future if he wants to retire where he would retire to you know we just really like just really had like a whole on conversation with him so he's always really really nice to us and so we always like supporting him even though you can shop his store online so um there's this one and then I also got from Kashi this this is a double knit it is a chevron which I haven't done chevron in so long but I just thought this was going to make the coolest fitted dress, fitted skirt and top combo, something along those lines. Um, I just thought it was really chic, the colorway, even though it is chevron and chevron can read really, I don't love chevron. I think it can read a little bit kitschy or it's not costumey. It's just loud you know but I thought the colorway of this one was really pretty with the orange and the blue the topes you know what I mean I just it looked 
expensive. It looked like something you would find in like a higher end, like Nordstrom store or something. Um, and it was cheap. I want to say it was like $8 a yard or something um, with Kashi sale. So, um, so yeah, I thought that a like fitted sweater, wide, you know, strapped crop top and also matching fitted skirt kind of situation was going to be what I was going to do out of this. It's so nice though. It feels really soft, like a blanket. Yeah. It's really, really comfortable, really thick because it's a double knit. Um, so you can kind of get an idea of that there. And then that's what it looks like on the wrong side, but you know, really, really, really nice. And it's going to be a joy to sew with, I think. Okay. We are on. Oh, that's it. I thought there was one more, but there isn't. So those are all of the fabrics that I got when I was in New York City. How exciting. Um, it was a lot of fun. Always an adventure. It's always like boom, 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 boom while we're there. I feel like we're kind of like pros at it at this point. Um, I also got some other like notions and little things like that that um, I'll use. I'll show you guys when you know whenever I get them. But there's it's not like a very good show and telly type of thing. Plus, if I'm being 100%. I don't know where those are because <laughs> I moved. I, I think I know where they are, but I'm not 100% certain. The fact that these fabrics all stayed in one place is a miracle. Um, so now I can put them away, which that will be nice too. But yeah, so that's my New York City garment district fabric haul with some ideas for what I want to sew this fall. If you saw something and you were like, that would make the most gorgeous whatever pattern, I love taking your ideas. I love hearing your suggestions. So if you know of a pattern that would look great out of one of the fabrics I showed you, by all means, leave it in the comment section. I will take it very, very, very seriously. I will definitely look into it um, because I have the ideas in my head, but I don't have like the actual pattern names and what I want it to be and all of that. So that is going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much. Biscuit's just going to make an appearance at the end of all my videos now. She's going to be cool, cool, cool until I start doing the wrap up and then she's going to start whining. So, <laughs> but I know you guys don't mind seeing her. Honey, she's just a little independent woman. She doesn't want to be on camera and that's fine. Um, but yeah, so that's going to do it for me. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you very soon. Bye. Say bye. Say bye. No kisses. No kisses. No, no. You can say bye, though. You can say the bye, though. Oh, burps. Okay. <laughs> bye, y'all.